Is it my volume? It was mine. I had it muted. So oh, okay, was... man. I'm looking for the remote. I can't find it. Man. Hey, guys, by the way, guys, so you know when me and Zach do this, like, we're it. We don't have this giant staff behind the camera. I don't do these ridiculous, like, we try to make it as much value as we can do. And, like, so um, we just learn how to do this stuff um, ourselves. But we're, we're working on things to help you out. What's going on, man? Yeah, you guys are awesome. Uh, I got a scenario for you. So you okay. Not open, but uh, first, I got a, got a little something to get going here. Okay, shoot. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Dude, is that, is that a, what kind of drink is that? That's what we do when we're in the Coast Guard. Keep us awake. Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm re yeah. you're in Key West, right? Yeah, I'm out here in Key West, right? Yeah, I did. How old are you? 23. So is that, an, that was an energy drink, right? It was, yeah. I'm going to be okay, up to I was thinking it was that. So I used to do the same thing with, uh, with another drink, uh, and I did, a, uh, I did a lot in college, but uh, <laughs> is it nice and warm down there right now? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. It's, it's really sticky good. in Florida, man. I was out yeah. there today. I go, my God. The sea breeze really does help out, but, man, it is brutal. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm I'm, uh, I'm heading down your way in, uh, I don't know, seven or ten days. I got to go down there and do a little fishing trip. I, I'm not going to go all the way down Key West. It's such a, it's so hard to drive down there now. So It's tough. It's a long drive. Yeah. All right, Rick. So, okay, shoot, man. You're energized. You I like here. it. All right. We got okay. you on here. I kind of noted a lot of questions I have, but I really just wanted to run you through a scenario. Okay. If you were 23 years old, with all of the knowledge you have, none of the income, nothing like that, you knew how to wholesale a deal from start to finish, you knew which leads were the best ones to pull, what kind of plan, what strategy would you use to get started? What leads would you target? Um, you're talking about wholesaling, right? Right, to get your first deal with all of the knowledge that you have right now. Did you, you know my answer is not going to change. It's going to be core consistent. Government list right now, right. hands down. Um, I've always loved code violations because I felt it was the fastest path to somebody with a problem. When people start falling apart, mm -hmm. now code violation doesn't, sometimes it doesn't work well in like the major, major metropolitan areas. Like, San Francisco, like Manhattan, stuff like that, because a violation can be like a ridiculous thing on a $10 million building. So government list, honestly, whenever I struggled and then honestly, like driving for dollars, I know it's not nearly as effective. Um, yeah. Why? Well, I know you're doing it virtual. Yeah. If you have the ability to do the driving for dollars, um, true story, when I had a staff of 12 and we were struggling, I forced everybody into a meeting. I gave everybody a yellow pad. Everybody got in their car and we came back with a thousand leads every time. Wow. And honestly, it was probably the best thing we ever did. And I had to constantly enforce it. What I should have been doing is scheduling it twice a week and make it on everyone's calendar. And, but when you got 12 employees, like you can do a lot more damage with stuff like that. But honestly, if it's just one person and you go out and get a hundred leads, then that keeps you busy too. So many times the answer is in front of you. Right. You just got to go, okay, you know, what can I do? So a lot of times they go, okay, you have some longer term marketing plays, probate to longer term marketing play. The biggest problem people, they get impatient with probates. What well, didn't work? I've gone four months and haven't even got a phone call on probates. Like this is when we did inbound leads. Now we do a, a lot more outbound. Um, but like while you're waiting for stuff like that, um, the other thing you're missing in driving for dollars is just networking, like going out and talk. I, I guarantee you right now, I could go to a RIA meeting Next week, you give me two hours in that room, I guarantee I'll walk out with a deal. Like guaranteed, only because I know the art of networking and I'm going to find someone that found a deal, doesn't quite know how to do it. I'm going to pitch him how I can walk him through it and get him to the finish line and I'm going to treat him with dignity. The problem at Ria's, there's a lot of like old investors there and yeah. they do target the younger people and they will take advantage of people. Like I've been taken advantage of multiple times. Cause I just, I was naive. I just wanted to get deals done. I had no roadblocks. And then what happens when investors get older, they do the opposite way. They're like, oh, I'm not going to show you anything. I know it all. Like you, you're going to have to go, you have to pay a tax to go through me. And I go, and so a lot of you see right now is why I do it this way. Cause I, I've, I've been through, did I've been ripped off hundreds of thousands of dollars just on mentorships and coaching. This is one yeah. of the reasons I do this. 
And like, I'm not the only one who does the story. Go talk to all the other big ones. They'll, they'll tell you. I went through five idiots to even figure out how to do wholesaling. When I did wholesaling, nobody taught it. And I had to, I like had to figure out. And then I'd find a guy I did. I go, can you show me how to do it? He goes, yeah, I'll give you 10% of the deal. I would find the deal. He would take 90% and give me 10. Jeez. I was barely even a bird dog. And yep. I got sick of it. And I'm here to tell you the really cool thing, guys. Even though I told you I was a fool for four years, I spent a crap load of money. Like I make a million, I probably spent two, like just like that. I, I bought stuff. And, and remember when you're buying houses and, and amortizing cars and stuff, like it seems cheap at the time until the bills start to come due. Um, the thing is, even though when I didn't have a lot of money and I had to reinvent myself, like your clue is, I still had the skill set. I go, I, I can do this. Right. right. And long story short is, uh, when we transitioned from 2007, eight, I did have some extra money. I wound up buying an extra business. I'm not even going to go into the details. I spent a lot of money and I thought I was buying cash flow. It had nothing to do with real estate and I got my butt kicked. Yeah. And you know what I did? I hung on for that business for a year and a half, almost two years. And one day my lawyer just looked at me and he goes, why don't you just give it up? I go, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to lose half a million dollars. They go, just give it up. And I thought about it. I went home and, and, and I don't know, you call it pray. I meditated on it. And I just said, you know what? I'm done. More and trouble I than sold it to another person. I lost, right, for this half a million dollars real cash that I earned from my uh, real estate investing business. And the next day, I went out and I found a deal and I made $60,000. I go, what the hell did I buy that? And I learned a valuable lesson. It's yeah. So many people, like if you want to buy a business, um, there's companies out there that will brokerage like business. They all lie to you. Oh my God, you think real estate's bad? That one's the worst. And so I went back to what I did, which was uh, real estate. I love talking to people. And I learned a lesson. Even when I didn't have a lot of money, um, I went back and I made 60,000 like that. I go, okay, I know how to do this. I'm, now I've learned all the lessons. So the big part of what you do is the journey, is you learn along the way. It doesn't matter if you're in the military, the Coast Guard, you're a real estate investor. As you know, from the day you joined the Coast, how long have you been in the Coast Guard now? Five years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like from day one to where you are now, it's like the crap you learn. It's like, holy moly. It's like, oh, yeah. there's no way it's, you could have done it without like doing the experience. It's no different. I tell people all the time, like you just have to embrace and have fun along the journey. Like honestly, and like me in the perfect world, if I could go back in time and I, t I would have gone through the mil military would have been perfect for me when I was a young man. I, I had a lot of energy. I yeah. love physical activity. Um, I needed more discipline in my life. And uh, once I follow a schedule, I like I'm, I'm like rock solid and I didn't have it. And a lot of my people sort of them, I just didn't understand it. I was rebellious. I was stupid. Yeah. And, and I'm not here to say everyone should join the military, but I think if every kid got like a couple of years in the military to understand like what goes on with it, I think it would benefit all of us. So it's, it, that's not like a, I, I listen, I love the military. I think it's really cool. I think it benefits any but young person because it kind of gives you skill sets and I love because the one thing military will force on you, like Coast Guard, everything is discipline, right? Oh, yeah. Self -discipline. And discipline is the hardest part of wholesaling. So I'm here to tell you, like when I was a young man, I loved to play football. I was OK at it. But my coach says, you know, you got to go over and try this wrestling thing. I'll make a man out of you. I go, well, how much harder could it be in football? And I remember going from a football mindset and I remember going to that wrestling mat. I walked out of there. I just, I wanted to cry to my mama when I was done. I've never got my butt kicked so bad. <laughs> Everything hurt. I could barely breathe. I was like, I didn't know the human body could even endure that. And it kind of woke me up. And meanwhile, I struggled wrestling. I did okay um, because I only had a year and a half. And then I learned it was all about discipline. And then fast forward, I go, hey, when well, my son was going up, I kind of guided him to wrestling. And I go, and I looked at him. I said, listen, if you can give it four years, it will teach you discipline. And like anybody who does, like I love sports and events, but like I'm biased. I think wrestling is, is the one sport that makes you go out there. You have to be disciplined. You do have a team and you have to help your team win. And, but then it's an individual sport and it's painful. So like tennis would be equivalent, although you're, they're just beaming a ball at you. But in yeah. wrestling, so I remember my son sitting out there like, uh, you have your like girlfriend in the crowd, your mom's there and you go, oh my God, like the state champs on the other side, he know you're gonna get your butt kicked. And you just got to still go out there and fight the fight. Like I know sometimes I got to go up against the lawyer. I know he's going to attack me. I'm just like, I'm, 
I'm, I'm still going to fight the fight if I have to do it. I know when I have to deal with a seller, it's extremely difficult. So like I pull life events out of like that. So like your military experience, I'm telling you, is going to be better than most wholesaling programs. It's just the truth because most people in wholesaling, they lack the discipline and they don't understand how to do it. Discipline is a skill set. It doesn't matter if you're folding your clothes, you're shining your boots, you're waking up at 5 a.m. It's a set. You do it and you, you're just to go. This is non-negotiable, right? Right. If you can take that same mentality in your Coast Guard and do it in mm -hmm. wholesaling, you will do phenomenal. It's so, not optional in the military. <laughs> what's that? I said it's not optional in the military. It's not optional. There's a yeah. consequence for it. And honestly, <laughs> in business, there is a consequence if you're not disciplined and it's not like you don't get kicked out you just go broke yeah and that's the consequence and your whole family will suffer so like i really commend what you're doing because i'm like it's hard enough to concentrate just doing like the military alone and so like yeah, the life do. lesson is even in wholesaling if you do something so stupid like you go out and buy a three million dollar house something stupid like i did back then is it just like it was too soon too quick and they were giving loans away like candy at the time. I could, you could, I could have bought anything. Uh, the bag boy at, at the local grocery store could have bought anything. That's why you created the mess. So I learned a valuable lesson was all said and done. I go, I have the skill set. Nothing can take it away from me. I'm just going to go out and apply it. I'm getting rid of all the crap in my life and I'm just going forward. Now, when I do a deal, I live on what they call the 20% rule. Have you heard of that one? let me explain Jesus. it real quick i'm just yeah, i teach everyone a lesson here yeah, if you can learn to learn if so whatever you make if you can live off 20 percent of that paycheck or whatever it is you'll do phenomenal like oh well, rick you know i only make 40 grand a year you know 40 times uh 20 that's eight grand i go see now you're starting to understand how the problem works the problem is not the eight grand is you just got to go make more money okay because here's what happens okay you make a hundred grand now I got 20 grand to live. It's still, that's not gonna do much these days, but a lot of people are living at home. You're like in the military, you can set the money aside. Now you make 200 grand. Like, okay, I got my whole selling go. 20% rule, right? That's 40 grand. Okay, now, I, now I'm barely getting by, I can do it. What I've learned is if you can, listen, you make 20, you make it 25, you can make it 30, I don't give a crap, okay? 35 to 40% of your money is going to taxes. If you like it or not, it's going one way this. Sales tax, property tax, it's endless, okay? And when you get to my tax bracket, it's, they're taking 33% of it, like right off the top, okay? Once you start making three and 400,000, I showed you that, it's really easy to do 20% rule. The problem is most people wait till they, okay, when I make a half million, I'll follow Rick's discipline plan. You won't. I went through this. It took me seven years to accept that truth, okay? Four years out spending and three years of figuring out how to redo it. So. Maybe you go, okay, I'm going to take 40% of my money or 45 and then go, okay, every year I'm going to dwindle it down another 5%. If you do that in the beginning, the reason why Zach is so successful to do it, I started having him invest when he was 14 years old. Now, he didn't know anything about real estate. He knew of it. And then he just, he did the stuff like take 10% of your income, set it aside. Do you know what that stuff does when you're 14 years old, like 10 years down the road? It's phenomenal. So he lives under the mantra, like he's extreme. Like he's well below the 20%. And, but in the beginning people are like, well, I can't live off eight grand. I go, go make more money. And that's the whole point of the, the, the whole problem there is you, you don't have any, you don't have an expense problem. You have an income problem as Grant Cardone would say. And that's what yeah. you need to do. I love what you do. Like honestly, you've, if you can take your discipline and my course and like blend it together and how old are you now? I'm 23 now. Oh, I've been in the God. military since I was 18. That's amazing. Honestly, if I had to go back in time, I probably would have done that. And uh, I don't know if I, you know, I graduated, Yeah, I graduated high school a year and a half. And I worked and, as, and, as a rough. And yeah. And then you get you get benefits of the military, even if you decide to go out of it to a point. Right. Oh, yeah. I still get uh, uh, certain health benefits and uh, GI Bill. And, you, get, do you, you, know, guys, you guys know what I pay for. This is crazy, but like this is the, the screwed up part of being an entrepreneur. You know what I pay? for my family's healthcare. And like my son's on his own, like he's completely on his own. How much? Two G's a month. Jesus. That's just what, because I don't qualify for like government programs because if you make a certain amount, you just don't do it. So um, it just, it's insane, but like that's how the world works. But I do go out and get like the best, like after you spend $1,500, you might as well just go out and get the best you can. So um, say that and, is, yeah. and I don't do this to scare you guys, but like when you, 
after you make like a hundred grand, like you got to go out, everything's private and you got to go out and pay for it. That's fine. So it's, it's not to scare you, but you do get better coverage with it. But, um, the expenses right. are going from there. So I didn't mean to go off on a tangent. What else can I answer for you? I'm just telling you, if you get the skill set, no matter, even if you screw up completely, as long as you're alive, you can take that skill set. They can't take it away from you. The only way they can take it away from you if you commit a felony, it's really hard to do real estate yeah. behind bars. I'm just telling you, I've not to see anybody that can do it. So if you avoid that part of it, you're fine. So, Good and the only way you can get in trouble in real estate like that, if you completely mislead people and like lie. Right. That's when you get in trouble on it. So it's got to kind of disclose that you're doing whole, you know, whole yeah. that's why I'm excited guys. I went through the lesson. I sat there. I go, Oh my God, I'm broke. This didn't work out. That didn't work out. I bought a business that didn't work out. And guess what? I went back to what made me successful in wholesaling and I go, okay, I got this. I got a few tears out and then I went to work and I made like five, six hundred, five, six hundred grand in like six months period. I'm like, I can't believe, and then I worked out, everybody owed money and I just straightened it out. And in one year I was fine. And uh, I'm just here to tell, but then, you know, I got, I started rehabbing properties. I got in over my head and then we couldn't sell them. And it took me two years to unwind that mess from uh, 08, 08 and 09. And uh, that's when I made my mistakes. And I'm here to tell you, we're going into one of these types of markets. And for those of you who've been wholesaling and everything's just been incredible for two years, you're, you're in for an awakening. It's going to be different. And the good thing about wholesaling is you're in the market for what it's worth today. If you're speculating, you will get killed. And speculating and wholesaling are two different things. The minute you cross over into speculating and think you're smarter in the market, it will correct you itself. Does that help you? It does. I do have another thing that I got to ask. Okay, shoot. So with the contracts that you guys provide, I know you're not an attorney or anything like that. I'm, I'm uh, not an attorney. Right. Yeah. Have you used these in Texas yourself or Zach? Uh, yes, we've done a few deals in there. Um, so by the way, 90% of the time, if you give it to a, an attorney or a title company, they want to make changes. Just, yeah. I don't care. As long as you're not giving up your rights. Do you understand every contract is open to interpretation? We take right. in Florida, we have what they call the far bar. It's proved by the, uh, board of realtors and the, uh, uh, whatever the association is for lawyers. They all agree they have it's 21 pages. To this date, I still have lawyers and realtors that want to change stuff on it. And I'm just like, guys, if you two aren't happy with it, like knock yourself out. As long as my price is right, my terms are correct, unless you're going to put some crazy clause in there, I don't care. Right. Like, like uh, well, we need to change it to uh, on or before. I don't like that. Close by this day. Okay, whatever you want. Like, and here's what attorneys want to do. And I have a lot of good friends that are attorneys. They just feel like if they don't get their two cents in and they don't get that fancy law degree to show in there, they can show it's right. So I don't fight people over contracts. Remember, a contract is just an agreement. I promise you this. I bought a real estate. Well, I bought a piece of real estate on the back of a cocktail napkin at a courthouse step. I did it once. It was a really cheap house, an $8,000 house. The guy's like, do us like now. I go, if we can get it notarized and did it, and they thought I was crazy at the courthouse. We got it done right there. I gave my cashier's check and the, they thought I was crazy, but I sat there with an attorney with the approval of the court. They go, the, the only thing you need is an agreement of terms price. And there's basically five elements you have to have on a contract. I'm not a lawyer. That's that it. is, it's just, uh, that's contracts legendary. are a template. Yeah. And, that is legendary, Rick. And by the way, over my 20 years, I've probably dealt with 500 different types of content. I just give up on like you're constant. It's constantly adapting. So the latest trend, and I agree to a point of like disclosures, disclosures. Disclosures are just there so someone can't come back and sue you and say, I didn't tell you so. But I've had people sign documents to go. I didn't know I signed that. True story. I went to a car dealership today and a painful, painful event of buying a car for my wife. <laughs> I felt it was a closing dot. I paid cash for a car and it was like disclosure, this disclosure, that I go, this is ridiculous. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like, well, we don't want you to come back and say you didn't have options for this and that. I'm just like, um, so what used to be one or two pages of paperwork, it's like 15 at a car dealership for cash is crazy. What'd you, what'd you buy? What'd you buy your wife? Uh, it's a long story. I don't want to get into it. I got to know. <laughs> I, we're sensible with cars. I keep cars like 10 years. So it's just a, a you know, a simple SUV. Nothing like 
$45,000 car. Like I, I'm not, dude, I used to be in the car business. Cars do nothing for me. You want to talk about boats, dude? I'll yeah. go to town on boats. I love boats to death. I just, I live boats. I just, they're amazing. And, um, boats, like you don't play around because you can't call AAA. And when you're halfway between here and the Bahamas, the Coast Guard's going to like, okay, if you were a big boy to get that far, you can figure out how to get home to a point as long as your life's not in danger. So it's, uh, yes. I've had a lot of good friends in the Coast Guard, um, a lot of friends in Alamorada and Miami, and they kind of sit there and tell me every story. I've been saved by the Coast Guard multiple times. Yeah. I've been pulled over by the Coast Guard. I got pulled over in a high-end stakes tournament on a 70-foot yacht that I thought it was like really, really bad. It was on a really rough sea and the coast guard boat pulled up and the guy, uh, the, my, I was working on the boat and it was swaying. Um, this is out of Key West long time ago. Really? And, uh, I was only 19 years old and I remember the outrigger coming over the boat and the guy tried to prevent it. And then it got caught up. I believe it got caught up in the, uh, the sonar of, uh, one of the coast guard boats. And I remember watching that thing. I was like, holy, and it snapped down on the Coast Guard boat. It was really nasty. And luckily <laughs> nobody got killed, but uh, it was like a, it was like a $30,000 repair 15, 20 years ago. And uh, the Coast Guard was really good about it, but like the captain was like, he was pissed. He's like, please don't touch the rigger. Don't, that, you, the rigger's down. So you know when those riggers are down. And it was just, it was interesting. But yeah, hats please. off to anybody in the military and the Coast Guard, the crap you guys got to put up with. Well, um, especially in the keys, man. I appreciate all the knowledge you're giving me to set me up when I get out. So. Okay. Well, you got it. Like, honestly, though, but here's the thing is if you guys learn a skill set, nobody can take it away unless you let somebody like brainwash you. And I had to figure it out the hard way when I hit hard times. I go, you know what? I know how to do this. And even my wife goes, she goes, you're really good at like talking to people in real estate. I go, you know what? Let's just sell the business. Whatever we get is what we get. I'm not going to, because it's like the, you know, the person that's desperately trying to sell the house for a million dollars and the agents are like, dude, it's worth 600. The sooner you come to that acceptance, the faster you'll get rid of it. No, 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 no. I'll find somebody. And you try everything for a year and you can't sell it. And it's like, oh my God, I should have just listened to her in the first place. I finally had that like coming to Jesus moment. I go, I'm just, I just give up. And I moved. I was actually a motivated seller of a business. So I, by the way, I've been a motivated seller of real estate. I've like bought stuff wrong. And now that's why I like wholesaling. I get in and get out and make it happen. So keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate everything you do and just keep calling back and uh, I'll help you out as much as I can. Will do. I'm going to hit those utility lien lists and probates tomorrow. Uh, I mean, guys, government lists right now with everything going on the market, they're not sexy, but they work. They work really, really good. So stick to it. Thank you for your time. Bro. Okay, Billy. Have a good one, man. Catch a fish. God bless. Okay.